If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and a, another cutting video. Today, I'm happy to be cutting along with you the Yasmoda Handbag by Country Cow Designs. Now, this is our October Tuesday classes in 2023. We will be making this on the membership side of the channel, um, and I will be releasing this cutting video um, the first week that we start that. So as soon as we do our first class on Tuesday, um, I will release the cutting video to the public side. So if you're part of the public side and you are watching this right now, and this cutting video has intrigued you and you would like to join us for the rest of the months, please do hop on over to the membership side and join the tier, uh, what tier is it? One, two, three, four, I believe it's tier five. It's the one that says the Tuesday and Thursday sew along group. So you can sew along this bag with me. Now there will also be a tutorial for this bag, which will also launch to the public side of the channel once we have finished classes at the end of October. So depending on when you're watching this, um, you may be watching it already because the classes are over. Um, if the tutorial is there, then you know the classes are over. But yeah, and if you're watching this after the fact and you would like a slowed down version of the tutorial um, and the classes, you can definitely join the membership even just for a month to get the slowed down real time classes, which will be four two hour classes ish making this bag on the membership side. So again, that is uh, the Tuesday and Thursday tier over on the membership side. How to join is down below in the description. Anyways, the Yasmoda handbag. I do not have one to show you. This will be my very, very first one I have ever made. So because we are cutting it out together, I have not, um, I don't have a sample for you. So what we're going to do is I'm going to share my screen with you and we are going to go through the designer's um, uh, website to get some inspiration from some of her tester posts she has there. So let me set the computer up and we will come right back to do that. Okay. Oh, I also forgot to mention this is being shot live in my basement studio. So you will hear dogs out upstairs. You will have my family um, upstairs. Probably I'm on a busy street. So you may hear cars driving by and you may also hear airplanes because I'm like super close to the airport. So I apologize for that. That's what I get for being in uh, my home. So, okay, here is the Country Cow Designs website, Yasmoda Handbag. Um, Let's kind of go through what it says. So it includes a digital PDF with 22 pages, step-by-step -step photo instructions. They're fantastic. A cutting chart, which is awesome. She also has a full tutorial, so you can watch the designer's tutorial as well. Um, she designed and created this pattern on a domestic machine. So again, every pattern is domestic machine friendly based on the materials that you choose. So just know the sensitivities to your machine and choose your fabrics accordingly. Um, let me see, lots and lots of pockets. And she also has AO files if you have a projector, but this she does not have SVG files because this is a very large pattern. So let me see, Does, do you have size? Okay, so fabric recommendations are cotton, canvas, cork, vinyl, or leather. Again, make sure you understand, you know the sensitivities of your machine and choose accordingly. Your chosen fabric should be suitable for the capabilities of your sewing machine. So yeah, I'm just repeating her there. If using basic domestic sewing machine, we recommend using cotton or canvas for your first try. A finish size is 10 and a half inches tall by 13 and a half inches wide and four and three quarters of an inch deep. It features a slip pocket on the exterior, a zip top closure. Now she also has three card slots, one pen holder and a large slip pocket in the lining. I am going to be, that's one thing I am going to be doing differently on here is in my bags, I always have the same lining pockets. Um, that's just what is expected from my clients who I will be selling this bag to hopefully. Um, so I always keep my bag, uh, my linings of my bags consistent. So. If you are wanting to do the card slots and the pen holder, you can cut them out and follow along with Joe's tutorial uh, to do that. Everything else in the bag, I will be following the pattern. Um, she does call for putting some piping cording in the handle, but I don't think I'll be doing that because I don't have any um, of that size to put in there. So I'm just gonna do traditional handle. So besides that, that is the only thing I'm doing differently in, uh, in this pattern. 
Um, we have an interior zip pocket, grab handles, detachable, adjustable crossbody strap. Now I believe in the pattern she uses webbing for her crossbody strap. I am going to make mine out of vinyl. Um, she does sell hardware kits for this if you needed to do that. On her page, there's a link to the full tutorial. You can sell bags made from this design for home-based production scale. Um, yeah, so now let's look at the pictures. So can I click on, oops, no. Okay, so I am going to be doing something similar to this. I am going to have um, my accents in black. I will show you my fabrics here momentarily. Um, let me go through. You can see here, it's a medium to a large size bag. It's super cute. I love that with the chevrons. You can really, really have fun with different color combinations, multiple color combinations and everything with this. There is the zip top closure, recess zipper. She is beautiful for showing off those prints, like seriously. So this is the slipper, the slipper pocket, the slip pocket she's talking about. I will not be doing that in this video um, and in the tutorial, but you are more than welcome to do that. So I always like to let everybody know what I am doing differently. And really it is the lining pockets I do differently just because I like to keep my bags all consistent, but this is lovely. Um, oh, that one's pretty. So you can have so much fun with this bag. Just kind of go through all of these. That one's pretty too. So I really hope that these pictures are sparking some um, inspiration in you for choosing your fabrics. I will share with, of course, I'm going to share momentarily what I will be doing with mine. Yeah. Okay. So much fun. So the slip pocket is completely optional. You don't have to put it on if you don't want to. Again, I will be. And again, there is her tutorial there. Okay, so let me get the cameras all set up and I will show you what I will be making this bag out of. Okay, so one last thing to talk about uh, before we get to cutting is interfacing. Now, uh, she calls for a heavy stabilizer such as Peltex or, um, or Decaville Heavy in this bag, which is great. She also um, has made note that if you're using a vinyl or cork or something heavier, you could also use foam or Decaville Light. Um, I'm going to be using foam. I am a foam girl and I'm going to be making mine out of vinyl. So in my tutorial, once we get doing the tutorial, uh, you will see I will be using foam, but know that you can also be using Peltex or Decaville Heavy or Decaville Light as well. That's one thing I love about Country Cow Designs is they always have options for different types of stabilizers based on um, what is available in your area. Um, yeah. If I was using any cotton pieces, I would be backing them, them with the EB Fuse Light or a medium woven interfacing. EB Fuse Light is an Emmeline Bags version, say, of something similar to an SF-101. Um, so yes, if you're using cotton pieces, make sure you are definitely backing those pieces with EB Fuse Light. And if they're on the exterior, you'll also be choosing your main stabilizer for that. So yeah, I think that is it for stabilizers. Let me take this to a table down. There we go. Okay. So one thing on page of the pattern on page, page number four, Joe is, has done a really cool thing of actually showing you what each of the pieces are on a finished bag. Let me just kind of, when I look really cluttery here, let me just kind of move everything out of the way here. Okay, so what I did, because I am going to be using, um, I'm going to be playing with my vinyls a little bit with the accents. So I went through on the names, I kind of looked to see where they were situated on here, and I went and I wrote which vinyls I will be using for each pieces. So as I'm cutting them out, I have a visual idea in my head what I want my bag to look like. So I have it all mapped out here what I will be cutting for each of those. Once I was done doing that, I went ahead and I separated all my pattern pieces into piles based on the material. So this is my exterior pieces. So these are all the pieces I will be cutting for my main fabric. 
I also have a pile for my lining fabrics and a pile for my accent fabrics. So that's what I like to do to map out my bags. So I thought that would be fun to share because we are going to have so much fun with this bag. Okay, what am I using? Oopsies, I'm dropping stuff on the floor. Let me grab that. Okay, so I'm going to be using and this really pretty vinyl. I do not know what this is called. Uh, Louise from Sam Fabrics Creation sent this to me. Very nice. Thank you so much for sending this to me to try, Louise. I appreciate you so much. So this is going to be the main exterior of my bag. This is going to be what it looks like. This will be the front as well as the gussets. Um, I'm going to be using for my accent the Loon Black Connect Vinyl from Galaxy Customs. I think they're going to go really nice. So this will be my accent slip pocket, my straps, my crossbody strap, and the bottom overlay of my bag. Also in the bag, this is going to be my zipper overlay as well as my slip pocket um, binding that I like to do in my bags. So these are the two vinyls that I am going to be going with. I'm throwing all my stuff on the floor. My lining fabric I am going to be using, I thought this would be really nice, I have this waterproof canvas from Fabricville. I think it just matches the orange in these flowers really nice and it's going to give it that nice and vibrant pop. So, and I don't have to interface it because it's waterproof canvas. For my interior slip pocket, I want to bring some of the outside in and Louise from Sam Fabrics Creation also sent me some scraps of a cotton woven that matches the exterior. So I'm going to use this for my zipper pocket linings as well as my slip pockets. So I'm bringing some of the outside print in, but it's in a cotton fabric. I'm gonna be using matte black hardware from Emmeline Bags as my hardware. And we've already talked about interfacing. Okay, so let me pick up all the pieces that I dropped on the floor there, and we will get to cutting out the main exterior of the bag. Okay, so we're gonna start with my main fabric. If you've watched my cutting videos before, you do know that I take my sew line air, releasing, air erasing pen and I cross things off of my cutting chart as I go. And the reason I like to use the air erasing pen, I also use it to map out what my colors were, is because you leave it for a day or two, the pen marks disappear on their own. One less thing I have to worry about. So I will be following along with the cutting chart and crossing things off as we go. Now, just a reminder, I will not be giving out any measurements um, in this cutting tutorial for respect to the designer. So if I'm doing a measured cut, I will be going to face up. You will see me drawing them out, but I will not be giving you those measurements. You'll have to get the pattern to get those measurements. Um, okay. So we are going to start. What I like to do is I like to, again, make sure you know the direction. If you have a directional cut, I don't really have a direction. It's just covered in Dexter fur. Oh my goodness. I'll take a roller to that later. <laughs> okay, so I like to draw out my pattern pieces on the back of my vinyl first, mainly because if for some reason I don't have enough vinyl and I could have situated my pattern pieces differently, um, I could get more use out of it. So. I think I'm going to do it this way. So um, because it's kind of a white vinyl on the side, I don't want to use my ballpoint pen to mark it. So I'm going to use a pencil just because then it won't show through the opposite side. So always be careful what you're drawing on with. Um, if it's a lighter fabric, you probably don't want to use a ballpoint pen, which is what I usually use. So I know my direction of my fabric is going this way. So I know I have my pattern piece right. So um, Pattern piece A, we need to draw out two of these. Now you could definitely fussy cut this if you want to. Mine is kind of an all over design, so I'm not gonna worry about fussy cutting. I'm just gonna draw it out. Okay, so I'll draw out the first one on the back side. And where the fold line is here, I just do a little blip and a little blip. So I know where I'm going to line my pattern piece up when I flip it over to draw the other half. If you're using cotton, you can definitely just go ahead and cut this on the fold. That works too. Vinyl, I don't do that because it always ends up being like a quarter of an inch bigger just because the vinyl is so thick at that fold that your piece won't be accurate. Okay, so that's half drawn. So I'm going to flip my pattern piece over. I'm going to match up my little blip lips. That's what I call them, blip lips. And then draw the other half. 
Oh, I got a fly in here. Man, I have a pet fly. I had my window open, so I'm sure that little fly is going to be making an appearance. That's funny. Tis the season. It's nice and cool here in Kamloops right now. It's only like 15 degrees Celsius. This is perfect brandy weather. I love fall and spring just for the cooler temps, that's for sure. Okay. So that is one done, and I'm going to write A1, so I know, or piece A for main panel. I like to write on the back what it is, and I'm going to go ahead and draw out my second one. First half, match up my marks, my blip flips. So this vinyl is a fuzzy back. That's why it's attracting all the dog hair. I had this sitting down on the ground and I think Dexter was lying on it. Which is okay. I'll make sure that's all cleaned up <laughs> before I start sewing. So main panel. So that's my two exterior main panels. So I'm gonna go ahead and cross off my my, on my cutting list that that is up. Oh, she's even got a call that says tick one done. I'm going to do her tick one done. Um, okay, what else do I have? Um, exterior gusset top and exterior gusset. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and draw out my exterior gusset and I think it's going to fit perfectly right here. Again, it is on the fold. Make sure you don't have any um, salvages in the way. I'm going to go ahead and draw it. I, have no, I already cut my salvages off like I usually do, which is why I never remember what anything is called because I cut the salvages off. So again, at the halfway mark and the fold, you do your blip blips. Flip it over, draw the second half. Now this was directional. I wonder if it's gonna really make a difference. I'm gonna take a quick peek. I think it'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. Okay, so that's my gusset. On this gusset piece, we're also gonna have like a bottom overlay and some accent pieces and everything. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. So that is my gusset. What piece is that? Gusset piece D, so I can cross, I could do my tick there for my exterior. Okay, what else do I have marked for floral? Exterior gusset top. So that's this piece here. So I am going to draw out two of these. Again, I'm trying to get the most use out of my vinyl so I can have some leftover even for in case I want to say make a matching wallet or what have you. Okay, so I'm gonna draw out two of these. So this is piece B. Hoping I can fit another one there. Nope, I think. Nope. Okay. It's going to go right here. This is piece B. B. Cross it off my list and I'm going to kind of go down my list and see if I had anything else floral to do. And that was all I had for my floral pieces for my main fabric. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut them out with my rotary cutter. You can use scissors too. I'm a rotary cutter girl. I need a new rotary cutter. You guys can probably hear it. <laughs> okay. So that's one exterior piece.
Yeah, my, you can hear it goes click, click. It doesn't roll very good anymore. I gotta get a new one. Now I'm not going to be attaching the foam interfacing to these uh, just yet. I will do that later on in the pattern. Um, but if you were using a fusible interfacing, you would use the pattern pieces that are included. So if you had a fusible one, I'm going, mine aren't fusible, but you would just be kind of fusing them outside of the seam allowances on the back. So, but because I'm using foam, I will be using the full piece for my foam piece and then I will be cutting my foam on like a, uh, I don't know if it's 45 degree or 90 degree angle to um, flatten out that foam and I'll explain that when we get into the tutorial for that. So, Okay, so I'm going to take these two exterior pieces and I'm going to keep them with the pattern piece and I don't have to do anything else with these pieces so I'm going to put them in the done bin. I do not need to interface these or anything because I'm going to be using a sewn foam which I will do later on. Okay. This is the gusset piece. Now the gusset piece for the stabilizer while we're cutting this out I'll explain what I'm going to do. Um, because I'm not putting a decal heavy into my gusset as my main stabilizer, but I'm still going to want to have that nice and centered in here for when I attach my purse feet. So I will be taking the bottom accent, which I will be doing in black and using that pattern piece, but I'm going to off of all four sides, cut away whatever the seam allowances is. I'm not sure what the seam allowance is. I can't give the measurements, but on all four sides, you, out of your decal heavy, you would just cut it that much smaller out of the seam allowances. And I'll show you that piece once we get to it. But if you are using a decal heavy or fusible uh, interfacing, that pattern piece is going to cover that. But because I am using foam and I still want to have a base stabilizer, I will be just doing it a little bit different at that point using that one pattern piece as my guide for cutting out that interfacing. Okay. So that's my gusset piece. So your gusset piece, I don't need anything else with this. So I'll keep it with my piece. Actually, no, I'm going to put this in the to be interfaced pile because I will be putting my decal heavy outside of the seam allowances along here. Let me find that pattern piece and I'll explain it to you. I just cannot show you the measurement, so I'm going to cover it up. So this is the base overlay piece. Um, I'm going to be doing the base overlay piece in black, but for the um, piece of decal heavy that I'm going to be just kind of fusing nice and centered on this gusset, I will just take, say, say the seam allowances was three eighths. I am not sure what the seam allowance is. I haven't looked that far, but I just be taking three eighths of an inch off of each side of this and then cutting my decal heavy piece out of that and then fusing it onto this. I do not do interfacing in the cutting videos with you because we all use different ones. I just like to explain what I will be doing to um, accommodate to have that heavier stabilizer in the bottom because I will be using foam. Okay, so I'll put this into the to be interfaced pile. Cleaning as I go. And then our last two pieces. And you can see here, I've got a good chunk of vinyl left for another project. So I will put this rest of this vinyl into a scrap bin for another day. But yeah, I've got a good, a good quarter yard here maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not great with measurements. <laughs> Set that over there. Vinyl's expensive. You want to always make sure that you are getting the most out of it. And if you can get multiple projects just based on, just because you planned your cutting around it, that's an added bonus. Okay, so there's my pattern piece B pieces and I will put them with my pattern piece here. And there's nothing else I need to do with this, so I'll put this in the done pile. I'm going to clean all this up, and then I'm going to come back with my Loon Black Canuck vinyl to cut the accent exterior. Okay, so for my accent pieces, I do have some measurement cuts, which I cannot share with you. So I've just put this to 
um, face camera so you can see me cutting them but you can't see what I'm cutting them. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my crossbody strap. As for the lights and the pattern, I'm going to use, I'm excited, my pretty new Marmino ruler that I got from So Magical. It's my first time using. Super excited. I'm throwing my pieces around again. Okay. So I'm going to start off with drawing my crossbody strap and then my handle. So use your um, your pattern measurements for these and draw them out. I always draw the straight pieces out first. I always want to make sure I have enough for my crossbody straps. <clears throat> so I'm doing a one inch crossbody strap. So you just follow the measurements for that. And I usually do my crossbody straps the length, the full length of my um, vinyl piece. Again, in her, in the pattern, I believe she uses webbing. So cut the webbing according to length there as well. Okay, draw down the other side. And I'm also going to go ahead and put my center line for when I go to make the strap later on. So I'm already here marking it. I may as well do all my marks now. I'm a little bit off there. Let me fix that. I talk to myself a lot, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> okay, next thing what we're going to do is we are going to draw out our handles. Again, they are measurement on the pattern. So it's in the accent fabric thing. It's the second one in. So draw out two of them based on those measurements she has there. Okay. I'm also going to draw my center line as well, just to have it done already. <clears throat> this is such a pretty ruler. Let's make sure I got this right. Double check. Double check. Yep. Yeah. Another one on top of that. And she's got some really cool decorative work going on with the straps. We're going to have so much fun with this. I rarely show strap work in my videos, but we will be today. Or once we get into the sewing tutorial. halfway mark. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I'm going to mark handle, handle, and cross. So I know what each of those pieces are. Okay, before I go to table down, let me just make sure I don't have any other. Mm -hmm. Let me look, let me look, let me look. No, I think those are the only things I have pattern pieces for most of everything else. So let's go down like this. So you can see I've drawn out my crossbody strap as well as my handles. Next, going down the list, let's cross off what we have done. I have done my handles and I've done my crossbody strap at the bottom here. Okay. Now we want to do, grab about all my pieces I set aside and start drawing these out. Okay, so I'm gonna draw out my base overlay piece. Again, I'm gonna put it wrong side down because I can't show the measurements that are on the opposite side. I could have done this with the ruler, but that's okay. I'm gonna draw out here. So this is my base overlay. So I believe there's going to be a possible raw edge here, which means I will be doing some edge painting, which I love. Okay, clip it over on the fold. So I haven't read into it, but I believe this has to be a... Okay, if using vinyl cork leather for the exterior gusset piece D, then this base overlay is optional. So I'm doing the base overlay because it's going to give that pop of color. But I believe this side and this side, the short sides are going to be left raw. I'm guessing. So I will be edge painting those. I will read through the pattern before I do that though. Base overlay is done. Okay. Let's cross that off. Base overlay. Again, it's completely optional if you want to do that piece. Where are we? Base overlay. Done. Um, that's my zipper pocket, I think. Or not zipper pocket. Exterior slip pocket. So it's going to fit perfectly right here, I think. Is it? Is it? Is it? Nope. We'll do that one next. <laughs> How about this one? Will this fit here? Nope. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna draw some little ones over here. Again, I'm trying to get the best use out of all my things. So I have my lining and gusset top. So the reason I'm doing this in black is my zipper panel and my lining um, top trims, I wanna do in black vinyl. So everything above the zipper panel is a consistent color. And I decided I wanted to use the accent color for that. And everything below the zipper panel will be the lining fabric. So we need to draw out two PCs. I'm gonna do that. I'm using pen on this black because I know it doesn't show through. So this is PC lining and gusset tops. Oops, kind of went funky there. Nope, we're good. I'm going to draw the other one up on top here. Shoot, fly, don't bother me. There's a fly, it's driving me nuts because I have my window open. Okay, so that is my two PCs. I'm gonna cross that off, PCs. I have two of those. Going down the list, I need two uh, strap tabs, which I'm doing in black as well. Um, again, I don't want to show what the measurements are on here, so I'm just going to put them down like so, so you can see me drawing them out without knowing the measurements. Because these are, you can actually, uh, just use a ruler to draw these ones if you wanted to, depending what your preference is. But I can't give you these measurements, so I don't want to show the other side because it shows it. So that's one. I'm going to do the other one right here. And you can see how I'm using up as much of the space on my vinyl as I can. So I have very 
very minimal waste. Okay, so that is two piece ease. Cross that off of my list. I'm kind of working down the list now. Okay, exterior slip pocket. Actually, no, I'm not going to do it. Okay, what's this piece here? Gusset accent. Okay, and we need two gusset accent pieces. Again, the measurements are on here, so I'm going to put them face down so you guys cannot see what the measurements are because you need to buy the pattern to get those measurements. And we need two of these. One. And two. And this is piece I. Cross that off of my list. Piece I is done. Okay. Um, okay. Got two more pieces to go. I'll bring this over because I'm going to start working from this side again. We need one exterior slip pocket. What do I do with my pen? There it is. Okay, so I'm going to draw that out here. You could probably very easily put an exterior slip pocket on both sides of your bag if you wanted to. I'm just going to do the one. Draw that out. Oops, I didn't turn the sound off my computer. Sorry about that. Do my blip blips along the fold. Okay, flip it over. Line up your blip blips and finish drawing it out. Oops. So that is piece F. We will have to do a lining piece for this as well, but we just need the one exterior. So piece F is done. And then we need to do two top trims. So again, this will be on the lining side of the bag above the zipper panel. So we need to cut two of these. I'm lining up the straight edge of it with my handle so that can be all done in one cut and try to save a little bit of time. It may only be like a second or two, but every little bit helps. That's one, and I'm going to do a second one beside it. Again, talking to myself, my goodness. My mom is texting me. Okay, so this is pattern piece G. Let me turn off that sound. Okay, so I can cross off pattern piece G and pattern piece F. Handles I have done. Okay, so I am going to have to go back up to my face because we have a couple more measured pieces to do for the zip top closures. I'm trying to see here, zip top closure. So we need two zip top closures for the recess zipper as per the measurements in the pattern. So let me grab my ruler. I'm actually going to put them here and draw out two of them with your ruler. Now, I believe she did have a pattern piece too, but a lot of the measured pattern pieces I didn't print off because I want to make sure I'm saving a tree as much as I possibly can. 
And I actually really, really like using my acrylic ru rulers to do the measured pieces. I find it's a lot faster and you get a nice straight line. And again, you use a lot less paper. So we need two. So this would be zip top closure pattern piece F if you're using the pattern pieces and cut them as per, draw them as per the uh, measurements in the pattern. Double check it. Uh, okay. Looks good. There's one. Now, one thing I'm going to do a little differently is it does call for lining pieces for this as well, but I'm going to do both sides of my zip closure in this vinyl. If you are on a machine that's sensitive to thicknesses, definitely use a cotton for the opposite side, but I, I'm going to do both of mine in vinyl. So I am going to draw out four of these. So you either can draw out four of your vinyl pieces for your zip top closure or two exterior and two lining, depending what you want to do. So, completely up to you. That's what's so great about making our own bags is we can we can just do us. We can I can do me. You can do you. You can decide what you want to do. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm gonna do both of mine in the same. Okay, so zip, zip. Put just down again so you can see what I just drew out. So you can see I did four. So you can either do two exterior and two lining or four exterior or you could do four lining. It's up to you. But I already know that I will be using double-sided tape to hold those on and my waterproof canvas, my double-sided tape does not stick to it. So this will be better for me. So I'm going to cross off pattern piece H as well as the pattern piece H on the lining fabric side, because I did that already. So the only other things I have to cut out here, and I'm not going to show you while I'm doing them because they are for the linings and the lining pockets. And as you know, as I said before, I do my lining pockets different. So I'm going to be doing, um, I have a template for a zipper pocket overlay. There's also one in the pattern that you can definitely use if you're making your own, just make sure that the opening for the zipper overlay is 10 inches. I'm also going to be doing like my faux um, accent piping type thing for my slip pocket, which is a little different than um, than what's called for in the pattern. I will be cutting those pieces because they're my own pieces about 11 inches. No, no, I'm going to go 12 inches by two inches. So if you decide you want to do it my way, you can definitely do it that way as well. So I'm going to go ahead and draw those on and then come back and we'll cut this out. Okay, so I've driven, this is my slip pocket binding piece that I like to do, not part of the pattern, and my rectangle piece for which I will be creating my own shape for a zipper pocket overlay that I like doing my patterns. So now we can go ahead and we can uh, cut this out. Again, I'm just going to take my rotary cutter and have at her. All the way across. Oops. The rotary cutter went rogue a little bit there. So I got this scrap here. I'll be able to use this for something else a different day. Again, I don't throw away anything. If it's too small, throw it away. But if it's a big enough piece that I'll be able to make something with it, I keep it. So uh, there is my crossbody strap. Put in my finish pin. Okay. I'm gonna cut my handles out here. I 
I really need a new rotary cutter. This one sounds so sick. It's something to do with this thing. It just goes click, click, click. It's got a new blade on it, so I know it's not the blade. Okay, so those are my two handles. So I like to clip them together and they can go in the done pile for now. So for my pocket piece here, I'm going to put it aside with my lining, my lining pattern piece pile there because we will need to cut our lining pieces with this one. So I'm going to put my pattern piece with it and set it aside with my lining pattern pieces because I know I need to do more of those. Okay. Base overlay. that into yeah, that pile because I think I'm going to have to do some I'm going to have to see if I have to do some edge camp coating we'll see one piece pattern piece so I know what they are and they can go in the done pile my pattern piece is done pile Too many pieces, lots of accent pieces, but I think it's really going to make the bag. Eye pieces with my pattern piece in the dump pile. Okay. My slip pocket binding piece. Again, this is a brandy piece. This is zoomed in the pattern. And then my lining trim pieces. in the dumb pile. My zipper overlay piece, which I will cut off camera because it's different than the one in the pattern, but there, she also provides one in the pattern as well. I just like to, I have a signature shape I like to use, and I also have an acrylic template that helps me cut it really fast. So I'll do that part off camera. And then it's just your zipper panels depending on how many you do i'm doing all of mine in my accent so i cut four yeah i think this week i'll go buy a new rotary cutter this sounds so bad one two and you can see i have lots left over of my roll for another project and I kept my length so I could do another crossbody strap too for another project. My four zipper panels. Okay, I'm gonna get this all cleaned up and then we will finish off with doing the lining. Okay, so I'm going to start with my 
pieces of the lining I'm doing in this cotton print. So all of my slip pocket linings and my, um, what should I call it? Slip pocket linings <laughs> and zipper pocket linings I'm gonna do with this. So I only have the one piece here that I can use. I'm gonna actually use my piece F as my template here and cut around it for my zipper pocket piece. I don't draw on the cotton pieces or on my lining pieces. I just go in and cut. Of course, these cotton pieces, I will back with SR AB Fuse Light or medium woven interfacing. So make sure you do the same. Okay, so I'll put this into my to be interface bin. It's pattern piece F, lining is done. Cross that off. Okay, what else do I want to do? Okay, my zip pocket and my, okay. Now I am doing my slip pocket different. So I'm pretty sure I can share those measurements with you. I'm going to do my slip pocket how do I want to do this? <laughs> I'm going to start at this end because I think I'm going to use that for later. Okay, how, what does this end up being? So I'm just trying to guess how big I want to make my slip pocket. Usually I like them to be able to fit my cell phone. So I kind of just think that'll be good okay so again I'm just kind of eyeballing it <laughs> and I'm gonna make I'm gonna cut mine 12 inches by approximately seven ish inches so I'm just using this ruler and adding an inch onto the bottom or so And if you're doing her slip pocket the way she's doing it, then follow how she, her measurements there. And I think that will be good to be able to hold my cell phone. I'll be able to get two of them in and maybe a smaller one. So. So that is my slip pocket piece that I will have to interface. And the other one are zipper pocket linings and I can't share those um, measurements. So I'm going to tabletop up and I will cut out those pieces. So I have done my lining slip pocket, which I'm doing in different, my zipper pocket pieces, okay. Just cut them both at the same time. Now this is a birth bag and we will be turning it through an opening in the bottom of the lining. And then we will be closing up that opening in the bottom of the lining through the zipper pocket. Okay. So I'm cutting two pieces for my zipper pocket. One, two for my linings, and that will be interfaced as well. Is that all I want to do in the cotton? Let's me double check. So zipper pockets times two, done. Yeah, okay, so now we can put this away and we will cut out that waterproof canvas. All right, so we only have three more pieces to cut out. So I have this scrap piece that I think I can take advantage of. So I'm going to take my pattern piece L. I'm going to fold my fabric in half, just to use up this piece. You could cut them both at the same time as well, but just because I'm using up this scrap, I'm going to cut one at a time. So I press it on the fold. I make the seam as tight as I can, finger pressing it. And then I take my pattern piece on the fold and I hold it with these little hair clips here and I just think it helps compress that fold so you don't get too much excess fabric on that fold. Whoops, I 
go. Okay, and then I'm going to cut that out. Okay, and we need another one of those as well. I buy these from Fabricville in huge pieces. <laughs> so this is going to seem awkward here because not too bad. This is like, I think this is like a 600 denier. It's an outdoor upholstery um, canvas. It's so nice. So now that I've got this piece cut, I don't need to worry about doing it on the fold because I'm going to use this piece as my template. So I need a second lining piece. So I'm just going to put it down like so. And then use it as my template and cut around for my second piece. Could put pattern weights down too to hold it. So that is my two lining L pieces. Again, if you're using uh, cotton here, you'll want to interface these, but as I'm using a waterproof canvas, I don't have to do anything else with them. Cross that out, we're done our two L's, and then we just have our lining gusset piece. Okay, and I think it's going to have to go this way. Oh, I said I think I've got like three meters of this here all in one cut so it's a little awkward. Don't mind me. Okay. I don't think it would fit across here. Oh it might. Let's try something. I don't know if this will work. I'm going to fold this in half. I don't work with waterproof canvas very often, as you can tell. Okay, so I got it on the fold here to see if it is big enough. Oh, it is just slightly shy. I'm into the salvage. Darn it! Oh well, we'll go this way. That'll be fun. Dump my pins over there. again on the fold. Okay. Again, I'm going to press that fold down, give it a good finger press, and hold that seam nicely with a few clips to keep it nice and flat. And cut that out. That's my gusset piece. And then again, if you are doing a lining on the opposite side of your zip panels, you can cut two of those, but I did two of my exterior, or I did two sets of my exterior for that. All right, now let's take a look at the list and make sure we got everything. Lining gusset one, done. So yeah, again, all that's left to do is cut your um, interfacings, your stabilizers. If you're using a fusible stabilizer, definitely use her pattern pieces to cut those out. Again, I will be using foam. I will be adding in Decoville Heavy just along the bottom, which I explained earlier how I'm coming up with that. That's, that's different than the pattern, just because I do want to still have that Decoville Heavy in there even though I am using foam, but if you're using the Decaville Heavy or the Peltex for your full gusset piece, you do not need to worry about that. 
But yeah, that's it. So I think that took us about an hour to cut out, which actually isn't too bad. That was a lot of pieces. Um, yeah, I think this is gonna be a really, really fun pattern to do. So we'll call that for this video. Um, again, keep an eye out for the tutorial on how to make the Asmoda handbag that will be launched at the end of October 2023 once classes are done. If you're watching this and are super excited, you can definitely join us uh, for this so long. Um, it's on every Tuesday in, or the first four Tuesdays in October 2023. I think there are, yeah, there's five Tuesdays in October, so we do not have a class on the last one unless we need more time so this will be starting on October the classes start on October I'm looking I'm looking I'm looking third so yeah if you want to join us you definitely can um, yeah so the cutting class is October 3rd and then we start the sewing class after so if you have any questions, definitely reach out. All my information is down below, information down below on how you can join the membership side if you wanted to. Again, this one is in tier number five, the Tuesday and Thursday sew along class. Otherwise, keep an eye out for the tutorial that will be coming. Thanks again, Joe, for donating the pattern to these tutorials and for allowing me to make tutorials on your amazing patterns. If at any time you did like this video, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Feel free to share and comment down below. If you'd like to support my channel further, you can always buy me a coffee. That is linked down below in the description as well. Otherwise, until the next one, I'll catch you guys later. Bye.